on UCF Sports Night, it's time to tip it off. We get a preview of the women's basketball team. And we see what it's going to take for them to defend their Conference USA Championship from last season. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Hey there and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thanks for stopping by. We've got another big show for you this week, including the first basketball preview of the year. We're going to take a look at the women's basketball team in a few moments. But first, we start with the volleyball team as they had a big back-to-back -back at home this weekend, starting off with East Carolina. Let's take a look at what happened. A big matchup for the Knights on the home floor, and this one would be a thriller. Kristen Fisher led the way for UCF, dropping 18 kills on the Pirates. She was backed up by Lauren Williams, who put up a season-high 12 kills and posted a 458 hitting percentage. After an easy first set, the Knights ended up in a dogfight with ECU in the second and third, but the Knights withstood the charge, scoring 33 and 31 points in the second and third frames and taking the sweep over East Carolina. You know what? We just gutted it out. That's all it was. We just went out there and we just fought hard and we armored up and that's what we did. I mean, really, that was the definition of our, our armor up battle. It was amazing. That's like my favorite kind of volleyball ever. And it's awesome to come out on top of one of those. And it's just fun. That's fun volleyball. Meanwhile, out in Dallas, the number 11 women's soccer team continued its role with a one to nothing victory over SMU. Kim Newsom scored the only goal of the game as UCF won its seventh consecutive matchup. Saturday, the volleyball team had the second half of their back-to-back -back against the Marshall Thundering Herd. It was also UCF's second straight match without Erin Campbell, so that meant Evia Vildi had to step up, and that she did. She picks up 10 kills and hit 360 for the match. Kristen Fisher led UCF with 11 kills, and Sarah Rex tallied six kills, four digs, and three blocks. However, despite a very spirited effort, the Knights would fall to the herd in three. Out in Houston, the football team took on Rice, and this was a huge day for the Knights in every phase of the game. First play from scrimmage, Brett Hodges finds A.J. Guyton, who finds the end zone, 76 yards for the score, and the Knights were off and running. Later on, watch the reverse to Guyton, who throws it deep to Kamar Aiken for the score. That made it 28 to nothing, UCF. And then the cherry on top in the second half, Josh Robinson rips off this owl pass. That is a pick six, folks, and the Knights get the most lopsided road victory in school history. 49-7 over Rice. Meanwhile, in Birmingham, the men's soccer team fell to UAB by a final count of 2-0. Sean Doyle came up with nine saves for the Knights against the 25th-ranked Blazers. Men's tennis was in Athens, Georgia for the ITA Regionals. Blaze Schwartz and Claudio Romano picked up victories for UCF on day two. Meanwhile, women's tennis was in Auburn, Alabama for their ITA regionals. Jenny Frizzell picked up a couple of victories and made it to the round of 16 in singles play. Also, the doubles team of Alexis Rodriguez and Taylor Dubins picked up a victory in the main draw as well. And Sunday was a huge day for women's soccer. The Knights picked up goals from Emily Maynard and Katie Jackson and get a 2-1 victory over Tulsa. And with that victory, the Knights clinch at least a share of the Conference USA regular season championship. It marks the third time in five seasons the Knights have won the league in the regular season. And as always, for more news, scores, and features on every UCF sport, log on to UCFathletics.com. Well, don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we begin our basketball previews with a look at women's basketball this week. And what does it feel like to win a conference championship and still have to prove yourself? We'll find out what some of the players think when UCF Sports Night returns. Night fans, join the women's soccer team for senior night on Friday, October 30th, as your number 12 ranked Knights face Southern Miss in their regular season finale. More information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com.
an innovative anthrax vaccine, promising research on cancer, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, and advanced laser developments. In their search for new answers and better solutions, UCF professors are awarded millions of dollars in research funding each year. Needless to say, we're all quite proud of them. UCF stands for opportunity. Game day getaway. Hey Orlando, it's time to get away with your UCF Knights. You won't want to miss a minute of the action in Bright House Network Stadium this season. Single game tickets are on sale now. Don't be left out. Armor up, Knights fans. Call 407-823-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com for your tickets today. Welcome back to the show. It was an improbable run last year as the women's basketball team started just 2-11, and 11, but then went undefeated at home in conference and then won four games in four days to take the Conference USA Championship and a spot in the big dance. But that was last year, and it seems this year no one is giving them a chance to repeat. But the players will tell you that they're working harder than ever to try and defend their Conference USA Championship despite the target on their backs. We got a preview of the women's basketball team in our Sports Night Spotlight. Last year, around this time, I was thinking, you know what, we can bust this conference wide open. I was thinking that, of, and, um, and we did. Coach instilled a lot of confidence in us, and she always told us going into a game, don't go into a game trying to keep it close. We go into and anybody we play, we go into it thinking that we're gonna win. I still believe that people don't believe what we did was actually true and um, something we can do again. But yeah, a lot of people don't believe in us. If anything, it just adds fuel to our fire to want to prove everybody wrong, just like we did last year. It's just a, in a different sense now. Everybody didn't think we could do it because we were picked well, but now it's they don't want us to do it again. I'm so hungry to go back to the NCAA tournament. I just want to win that game. It was just heart crushing for us to lose by five. You know, so it's just, I'm just ready to go back. I believe that we're um, motivated to go out there and do way better than what we did last year. So we just got to continue to work hard and practice and success will pay off in the long run. Some of the things that Coach has been telling us is that uh, it's not going to be like it was last year. What we did was great, but it's just that, in the year we had to do it all over again and work 10 times harder because now we have a target on our back. So more people are coming after you, they're mad that we won the championship. So uh, we have to stay motivated, we have to tighten up the little things, we have to communicate, we have to do everything. Don't take a possession off and do everything that we need to do because he's not going to take anybody's surprise this year. The team has grown tremendously. Um, it's crazy. We, we came in as freshmen all together. Uh, we've been through hard and great things together. So, I mean, it's just, it's been a crazy about a thing, how much we've been through together. So, I think we've grown up a lot on and off the court. We've just been doing the same thing that we have been doing from the beginning, just being fundamentally sound. But we just went up a, a couple notches in conditioning, talking, weight room, and everything. We remind ourselves constantly of what we were and who we, who they think we are out there, um, that people still don't believe in us, and just to go out there and be the best practice team in the conference and everything will work out for itself. So. Extremely hard, especially practicing at 6 o'clock in the morning. It, it, it's, it's tough, but we're, we're getting through it and we're adjusting and we're picking it up. Just wait and see. In time, in time will tell. Well, the women's basketball team begins their season with an exhibition game on November 8th against St. Leo. Their regular season home slate at UCF Arena starts on November 20th with a game against Bethune-Cookman. For more information, visit UCFAthletics.com. 
Well, don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we sit down with associate head coach Greg Brown to talk about some of the challenges facing the team as they try to defend their Conference USA Championship from 08-09. Stick around. We're back in a moment. Knights fans, season tickets for men's and women's basketball are available now. More information, including ticket prices, at 407 UCF 1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Attendance people, listen up. Albertson. Here. Barnes. Here. Swain. Here. Reyes. Here. Perez. Here. Clark. Here. Gerbic. Here. Sellers. Here. Nguyen. Here. Domey. Here. And Miller. Here. In our classrooms and throughout our community, UCF stands for opportunity. Orlando, it's time to get away with your UCF Knights. You won't want to miss a minute of the action in Bright House Network Stadium this season. Single game tickets are on sale now. Don't be left out. Armor up, Knights fans. Call 407-823-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com for your tickets today. It's a long season. There are Saturdays we steamroll our opponents. There are nights that'll make you cry. But it's worth every beat of sweat when you get the call to play in the bowl game. So for making our dreams become reality, we salute our bowl partners. This is Conference USA. Competition lives here. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Joining me now, the associate head coach of UCF's women's basketball team, the defending conference champions in Conference USA, Greg Brown joining us. Coach, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We've got a, uh, you know, when you look at what's going on from last year, what do you think that the team as a whole learned the most from that experience of, you know, struggling out in the start of the season, getting off to that 2-11 start, and then turning it around after New Year's Day and making a run to the conference championship? I think even just talking to them and, and trying to brainwash them a little bit, the idea of every possession matters, and not just every possession during a game. I think everybody understands during a game, but they started valuing possessions in practice, which yielded a better result in game. And that's what hurt us. That's just from being 2-11, 11-5. We finished out games because we valued those possessions and, and they're understanding now a little bit more of how important practice and preparation and intensity are going into a game. After that valuable experience of winning, you know, four games in four days and then going out to Chattanooga for the NCAA tournament and gathering that experience, I mean, it was a wonderful experience for everybody. It's a new year now, so what have you been telling the players through the summer and now that practice has begun to keep them focused on, on achieving a new goal this year? I think they've done a good job of focusing themselves, and that's where it's got to start. It's got to be a player-driven team, not a coach-driven team, and they've done a good job with that so far. We've just been, you know, as a coach, we're pointing out what we need to do to take the next step. And, you know, they always say you can't go back in the same river twice. We can't go back to where we were. Every team's different, and we're a year older, and we have, we've set the expectations higher now. So that's how we're trying to drive them towards that. Let's take a look at uh, the players position by position. We'll start with the guards and you got so much production on the outside out of your guards last year from Chelsea Wiley and uh, people like Jelly Mealing. Asia Patrick was a pleasant surprise, especially down the stretch. Uh, what are you looking for from those players this year? Well, I think those, I think Marche White came in was huge against Rice. It was one game that jumps out at me. They, they play off themselves very well. Uh, they play off each other each bring something different than another player brings and that's they're starting to understand their roles and they're not trying to limit them or ask them to do too much they understand where they fit in the system what they need to do for the team to be successful 
post players, you know, things were interesting last year, but, you know, Emma Cannon really emerged and she had uh, really a breakout season. And, you know, like I said, you know, you, I know you guys are always looking for a, a little extra help on the post position so that it's not all uh, loaded up on a few people, but what do you look forward to from the post players this year as well? Well, same thing. We look for our post to run the floor and rebound. That's the two things that got us w where we went, and that's what will help us take the next step. Um, we're going to be a little bit smaller. I think we're going to be a little bit quicker. We've opened the floor up a little bit more, so we're going to, in a good way, change our look a little bit, which should help free up Emma and Danae and, and Asia Kelly and, and, and Leah and, and Racine inside there. We got a couple of new players joining the roster this year and uh, two very different studies in uh, how to get to UCF between Jessica Hall, who comes in, very experienced player uh, who's struggled with some injuries, and Nate Carter, uh, a true freshman coming in. Tell me about each of those players and what they bring to the table. Jessica Hall brings six years of college experience with her. You know, she's a graduate student setting a curve in the um, classroom right now with, with that. Uh, brings a different shooter, understands the game, she can teach, and, and it's always good to have the player in, inside their ear right there a little bit. Oppose that with our baby Nay. You know, Nay from Houston, and uh, Nay can put the ball in the hole, Nay can play. We're working right now to get her to understand that the intensity at which she's got to go. And that's what the, uh, the team has done a good job too of teaching her that as well. And, and learning the value of defense and possessions and all those things that, that they don't quite understand yet. The schedule coming up, uh, you know, last year la we had, we saw a bunch of pretty good teams come into UCF uh, from out of conference uh, in that initial run. Uh, this year it's pretty much the same. We have some good teams coming into our building here at UCF Arena uh, went before the conference season starts. What are you guys looking forward to on the schedule? Well, we just look, I mean, it's a cliche, but we really are just looking at the next day out. We're trying to get through practice. But looking at it from that point of view, you have uh, Middle Tennessee State going to there, you know, we'll open up the top 25 team. I don't they may be a top 20 team by now. Florida State, Notre Dame, Alabama, um, Washington, all coming in, all BCS schools. And, and we do that because we know that's the type of teams we have to compete against, and we have to raise our level of play as we go into conference. And then when you look at the conference, who are some of the teams that you think are going to be uh, going to be fun to compete with out there? Well, it's fun every night, I guess. Every night's a competition. But, you know, you look at it with us and SMU and uh, UTEP, Houston, Southern Miss, all returning so many people that, that you have a veteran group. We're a veteran, but we're still young. These guys are, are tournament experienced, veteran experienced, are very experienced, and that'll be the challenge for us there is overcoming that. There's a difference between being a senior and knowing this is your last shot and still being sophomores and juniors going, well, we're going to go hard, but we still got another shot. There's a different sense of urgency there. That's true. Well, it is going to be fun this year. We're looking forward to finally tipping it up when the season gets underway. Associate head coach for UCF women's basketball, Greg Brown. Thank you so much for joining well, us. Thank you. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we've got plenty more for you, including some news and notes and also our plays of the week. We'll be back in a moment. Fans, check out the football team as they face the Marshall Thundering Herd on Sunday at Bright House Network Stadium. Kickoff is at 8.15 p.m. For more information at 407-UCF-1000 and at UCFAthletics.com. Hey Orlando, it's time to get away with your UCF Knights. You won't want to miss a minute of the action in Bright House Network Stadium this season. Single game tickets are on sale now. Don't be left out. Armor up, Knights fans. Call 407-823-1000 or log on to UCFAthletics.com for your tickets today. fans check out all the latest UCF action on UCF Sports Night. Join us as we recap all the highlights of the week from every UCF sport plus all the features and interviews that take you inside the world of UCF athletics. 
If it's UCF Sports, it's on UCF Sports Night. You can catch UCF Sports Night all season long on UCF TV and also on Bright House Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for details. We are. We are. We are Conference USA. We are coaches, teachers, motivators, and mentors. And our game education is key. Skill is rewarded, and sportsmanship is paramount. We develop strong students and smart athletes. And every one of us is committed to keeping our game forever great. Conference USA. 15 years and going strong. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our plays of the week in a moment, but first, let's have a look at some news and notes from this week. News from the football team, UCF defensive tackle Terrell Troop has been selected to play in the 85th annual East-West Shrine Game at the Citrus Bowl on January 23, 2010. The senior from Conyers, Georgia has credit for 20 tackles and a sack this season, but has really gotten the dirty work done eating up double teams inside helping the Knights into the top 10 nationally in run defense and into the 11th spot nationwide in sacks. The East-West Shrine game is football's longest running collegiate all-star game and benefits the Shriners Hospital for Children. Women's soccer news, the Knights have moved up yet again in the RPI rankings. UCF is now number four in the country. The Knights now trail only Stanford, North Carolina, and Portland in the national rankings. They have a 7-3-1 record against teams in the RPI Top 80 and are a perfect 9-0-0 against teams ranked below number 50. The Knights travel to the Conference USA Championships November 4th through the 8th before the NCAA Tournament begins on November 13th. And Becca Thomas is back in the news. She's been named Conference USA's Offensive Player of the Week for the second straight time. Thomas scored three goals on the Knights' road trip out to Houston this past week, picking up the game winner in a 2-1 victory over Rice, and then following that up with two goals, both on penalty kicks, in the Knights' victory over the Houston Cougars. Thomas is now sixth all-time at UCF with nine career game-winning goals. She and her senior teammates play their final regular season game on senior night at the UCF Soccer Complex against Southern Miss on Friday, October 30th. Time for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, volleyball against Marshall. Watch the effort by UCF here, keeping the play alive. And then Lauren Williams gets the block to finish it. Watch it again as Kristen Petrasek, Sarah Rex, and Kristen Fisher sell out to keep it alive for Lowe to get the point. Play number two, football against Rice, and the Knights reach into the bag of tricks for this one. A.J. Guyton with the reverse pass to Kamar Aiken, who hauls it down in front of the double team for six. Check it out again as A.J. becomes the first UCF player in almost two decades to catch and throw a touchdown in the same game. And a great throw it was to Aiken. Play number one, back to volleyball, and this is how you finish a match as Andy Youngblood gets the ace to finish off the ECU Pirates at the venue. Check it out again as Andy finishes off the Pirates in style for the big victory on the home floor. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. A big variety of action upcoming as we look at the week ahead. It starts with men's soccer midweek as the Knights take on Kentucky in a huge Conference USA match. Things kick off at 7.30 p.m. at the Soccer Complex, and the game is live on UCFAthletics.com. More soccer at home on Friday. It's senior night at the Soccer Complex for the women's team as they take to the pitch to face Southern Miss. Kickoff is at 7 p.m., and you can see that live on UCFAthletics.com as well. Elsewhere on Friday, volleyball is on the road in Birmingham. They face UAB. It all gets underway at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Also, tennis gets back into action as the men's team travels to Tampa for the USF Invitational. That shootout goes through Sunday. Saturday softball is in action at the UCF Fall Invitational. The Knights have a double dip at the softball complex. They take on a couple of local rivals, Rollins at 10.30 a.m. and Bethune-Cookman right after that. On the road, men's soccer is in Dallas on Saturday to face SMU. Action there starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And a big day on Saturday for the cross country team as they are in Houston for the Conference USA Cross Country Championships at Bear Branch Park. The women's 5K race is scheduled for 10 a.m. Central Time. 
Sunday, volleyball is in Memphis to face the Tigers. That match gets underway at 2 p.m. It is a football Sunday for UCF this coming week. First, tune in for UCF Sports Today with Coach George O'Leary. Join Pat Clark and the coach as they give you a preview of the night's game that night at noon on West 2. Then on campus, check out the men's basketball team at pregame madness at UCF Arena. Check out the team and select your season ticket seats as the team holds an intra-squad scrimmage and signs autographs afterwards. Then join the football Knights for their date with the thundering herd of Marshall. Kickoff is set for 8.15 p.m. on Sunday, and you can see the game on ESPN or hear it on the Knights' flagship station, 740 The Game. Then check out highlights and analysis of the Marshall game on another edition of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary on Tuesday on UCF TV, Sun Sports, and Bright House Sports Network. Thursday, tune in for the George O'Leary Call-In Show presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Join the coach and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF football every Thursday live from Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes. You can hear the show on the Knights flagship station, 740 The Game, or at UCFAthletics.com. And a reminder, you can catch our show, UCF Sports Night, every Tuesday at 8 p.m. on UCF TV. The show also airs on Sun Sports and on Bright House Sports Network. Check your local listings for details. And for all the latest news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. And as always, if you want to see this edition another time or you want to catch any of our archived editions of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want online. All you have to do is visit UCF TV online, which is www.ucf.tv. Well, that'll do it for us for this week here on UCF Sports Night. We'll catch you again next week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 101.1 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV.